I greet you all in the name of Jesus the Christ and welcome you to our worship today. And I'd like to wish all of our mothers and grandmothers and people who are mothers to us a happy Mother's Day. And we hope that you're able to celebrate in some way. But we just knowing that you are, are loved and thought of and grateful for. So let us gather within the covenant of love which binds us to God and to one another. Let us gather to worship the, cre excuse me, the creator of heaven and earth, to whom be blessing and glory and honor forever.
loving God, we admit to you that we don't run away. We get lost in fear, scattered in hopelessness. We forget how to listen for your voice. We demand signs that this will end, answers to how to move forward because uncertainty is too heavy a burden. And yet yeah. you have shown us the way, the truth, and the life through your Son, Jesus. You have shown us the way of love. You have shown us that our acts of love are powerful, able to overcome fear and hopelessness. Remind us of who you have called us to be and what you have called us to do. Love one another. In the name of Christ, who has shown us the way, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen my Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me, because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I imagine you're at home and have had a lovely breakfast in bed, moms and grandmoms. It's almost better than having to rush to church, so hopefully there were some nice toast and, and pancakes and things like that for you this morning. This is, of course, Mother's Day, and while you spend the day together, you might want to think about all the different things you've given mom over the years and maybe she can share with you what she remembers most. I know my biggest memory was receiving a plastic bread napkin holder. Uh, why? I don't know. And I still to this day can remember that. So maybe grandmas and moms will share some of that and this always makes for a good story. But today would also be something called Blanket Sunday. And when we were here last year, the year before, we always talk about blankets because a blanket is something that everyone can use and they only cost $5. So you get a lot of use out of them. Now, I have one in front of me which, of course, would be hard to do with a microphone. <laughs> I would normally have, what, Mordecai or Julie or Alice or Violet. Somebody would be up here helping me show this. Anyway, you look at a blanket. What would be the first thing you would do with it? What do you think of right away when you get a blanket? Probably use it to stay warm. And of course, blankets are used for that. Then you could say, well, what else could you do? Well, some boys and girls have to go out and collect wood in the morning before they go to school. In other countries, that might be something where you have to walk a couple of miles. So what you might do is take this with you, put all the kindling inside of it, and then tote it back home again. Well, what other things can you do? Some homes may not have a bed, but 
of course, what you could do is lie this down and you'd sleep on a blanket. That would be better than being right on the dirt floor. Or, in some cases, you might use it to keep yourself from getting wet. If it's raining, you might be able to put it up over something so that you could stay under it. There are families who many of them live in the same room and so a blanket would be a great thing to use to separate the room off. You could have part of the family over here, part of the family over there. Can anybody think of anything else you could do with a blanket? Oh, you could build a floor with it. You could also put it outside and put it over a line and use it as a tent. I used to do that all the time. So there are, or you could even put it over a table and pretend you're in a um, fort or something like that. So blankets have a great use. They last forever. And it would be something to give. And you might ask mom and dad or grandma and grandpa if they would consider giving the five dollars to go towards Blanket Sunday. And I hope that you all have a great day. We miss all of you, but I know you're out there smiling and making a difference. So, God bless all of you. Amen. Peter reminding his little flock 
of who and whose they are. Now, since we haven't been able to come together as, as our little flock here on Main Street, I wonder, are we feeling a little bit at sea and wondering what direction our lives are supposed to take, like those people that Peter is talking to? Of course, the people that Peter was talking to were a new group of Christians. They were new followers of Christ, kind of learning the faith. And Peter has been guiding them in their growth. And he uses that, that term, spiritual, like mother's milk, uh, spiritual mother's milk, um, because he's helping them kind of grow in their relative infancy of, in their faith, and as a new church, to be a strong community of faith. They don't really have a sense of identity yet. And so Peter reminds them that you are chosen. Remember who and whose you are. So he's not telling them what to do, how to act as people of faith, but he is inviting them to think about who they are. And he's helping them to reshape their identity. And so he encourages them to see themselves as a community-based living incarnation of a stone temple. We refer to the cornerstones. And so the people that, G that Peter is talking to are so to also be cornerstones in their community, kind of like the rock of faith that Peter was called by Jesus. And I think Peter's words are important for us to hear here right now and to know, because think about these words. If we are feeling a little, you know, we can't come to church and we can't do the normal things we do, we kind of get lost in our own heads. And, but it's good to be reminded that once you were no people, and now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Remember who and whose you are. And I think this urging about our identity, identity of who we are, is also at the heart of the gospel lesson. Now John brings us into the upper room with the disciples. And these men have a much more solid foundation than the group that Peter is talking to. But Jesus is talking to them after they've washed and eaten. But he says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, in our context and in John's context, our hearts are troubled. We're anxious. We're a little afraid. We keep hearing about new cases of the virus. And and it's affecting people in different ways. It seems to you know, be changing. And that's frightening. And we feel troubled. We're facing uncertainty. We've, we have lost loved ones. So when we're faced with our own and others' mortality, we're faced with loss. It's, it's uncertain. But I think it's helpful to remember, remember that throughout the whole Gospel of John, it's emphasized that the Word of God has come to us, has come to all of creation. The Word of God comes in the very person of Jesus, who shares the same joys, the same griefs, and the frustrations that we do. He pitches his tent right in the middle of our camp today with us, just like he did in that upper room with the disciples. And he's got a message for each and every one of us. And one of those messages is, do not let your hearts be troubled. Maybe today, Jesus might say it a little bit more like this. I know your hearts are troubled. Mine is too. So put your troubles in my hands for now. Trust me. Follow in my footsteps. And most of all, remember who and whose you are. And the thing is, we can do this. We can follow him within his footsteps because he tells us he's going to prepare a place for us. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Now, we know this from, it's read often at memorials, of course. But I think today we might look at it in a new way. It's that Jesus is always going ahead of us, preparing a place for us. He's making the way clear for us. So that we can always be putting just 
one foot in front of the other, and so we don't get stuck in, in where we are. We don't get stuck physically, we don't get stuck spiritually in one place for too long. Now, for some of us, that's enough. That's enough to know that we can always just put one foot in front of the other. But for others, like Philip, and who was listening to Jesus, and of course Thomas, who we know always wanted to have concrete proof, some of this is, too, that's too vague. It's, it's not enough. We want a plan. We want a map. And Lord, do we need a map right now? And Jesus gives us one. But it's not probably you know, a step-by-step -step map. Instead, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And Jesus is encouraging us then into a future that is depending on the relationship with him and God. He says, if you know me, you will know my Father. So he's telling us that we have a certainty. We have a certainty that we are not alone on a path, that we know the steps we are supposed to take. And the Bible is filled with people who have gone out and taken that risk and kept putting one foot in front of another, one step at a time, one day at a time. And that's the way of faith. That's the way that we can approach faith and have faith, one step at a time, one moment at a time. Remember who you are. I recently read about a woman named Rose Katami Jonathan. She is 67 and in Kenya. And every day she battles to bring water home for her grandchildren. But unfortunately their drought and hunger are driving not only her but many people to the brink. She she told the person she was talking to that drought has been severe. We have had three long months without water, and now we have to walk long distances just to get water or to dig for water. We are suffering. And yet Rose believes that God is her refuge. I believe she, he gives me the strength, she says, and helps me persevere. I pray that God will help people help me. I believe that each one of us can draw on that deep well of faith, just like Rose does. I believe that we are able every day to get up and take that first step, take that first deep breath, make that first prayer. And we can do it because following Jesus isn't some esoteric mystery. Following Jesus is just where the rubber meets the road. It's right here and right now. When Jesus talks to the disciples, he talks to us. He reassures us that we can handle his mission from here. It's in our hands to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to welcome the stranger, to clothe those who have been stripped bare, to sit with those who are in prison. That is what is said in Matthew. And we know that because we can do those things for others, we can do that for ourselves. Because why else would he also say, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these. Because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. Remember, that we have Jesus leading the way, clearing the path for us, and that we will get to where we are going, even though we don't really know all the steps of the way, but we will take those steps together. We will, like Rose and so many others, persevere, and we can have faith, even today, especially when we, rem we remember who and whose we are.
have a time to gather in a spirit of prayer, and I hope that you will join us uh, at 11 o'clock on Sunday uh, after the service for prayer and communion online. And uh, you can just go to our website and, and get online and join us for share your prayers. But I do have some prayers to share with us today. Um, we add. Uh, special prayers for the healing of Jim Hoffman, Gretchen's dad, who is had a hospital stay and now uh, gaining strength back at a uh, rehab facility. And also for Michael Noonan's sister, Doreen, uh, for her healing as she was diagnosed with the coronavirus. So we pray for, obviously, them and their, their family who are obviously worried about family members, um, and we pray for everyone's family members who may be affected and will have um, our own concerns this week. So I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer with me. Oh, holy God, we breathe deep with your spirit today. Inviting you to surround us and to fill us. That your breath within us replaces fear with peace, uncertainty with hope, anxiety with a calm surety that you are with us. Help us to remember that we are chosen by you. We don't earn your love for us. It just is. And so in mercy and relying on your grace, O oh God, we offer you our prayers. Praying especially for Jim for Doreen as she heals from this virus, for all the people who are taking care of them. We pray for all of those in our congregation who, even before this time, have been somewhat homebound or limited in their ability to get out. We pray for those who are missing the company of others. We pray for those who are putting their lives on the line, taking care of others who are sick in this time, for people whose jobs it is to help us be able to continue with our daily lives, whether it be in our children learning their lessons, or there are families putting food on the table and gas in our cars and health centers that we can call for computer help or insurance help or financial help. The, food, the shelters and the food pantries who are providing for those of us who are not as easily able to pay our bills. And we think of all of those people around our world. Because our news sometimes seems to focus very close to home, but we know that there are others around our globe facing the same things that we are, and even worse. Especially those who are refugees, who are faced with the serious challenges that are coming with the climate change, with less water arising water levels on coastlines. We give you thanks for the quiet times in, in industry that are allowing bluer, clearer skies and the relative peace in our national parks where animals are going to have their normal routine un uninterrupted by tourists. Help us, O oh God, to see the good and the blessing that is all around us. 
and we pause for a moment to offer you our own personal prayers. Hear our prayers, O oh God, and help us to remember on this Mother's Day <clears throat> the words that the prophet Isaiah said, As a mother comforts her child, so I comfort you. You are a mothering God, and we are so grateful for your great love for us. You made us in your image and called life from the earth and water. And so today we give you special thanks for those who have been mothers and stepmothers in our lives, for grandmothers and aunts and all those who have been like mothers to us, those who have shown us your comfort and courage and peace and strength. And loving God, we also hold tenderly the ones who have difficult relationships with their mothers or for those who have separated in relationship. We grieve with those who are also missing their mothers. And in these difficult times, oh God, we, we know the distance that separates us, the physical distance for safety, the distance, distance, distance of time for those who are poor gone, and the distance of fading memories. And so we pray, O oh God, especially today for your healing wherever possible, for forgiveness wherever possible, and for the hope that you bring in our lives. May we, this day, be inspired by others. May we remember who we are and whose we are, so that we can inspire other people in hope and in trust in an ever-growing faith. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing hymn is called Touch the Earth Like.
compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil for evil or insult with insult, but repay with a blessing that we may be God's blessings in this world. And most especially, may we go into this day in peace. Amen.